Howdy everyone, Pulcher here with an Age of Magic video, and in today's video we are doing the Champion Spotlight for Blood Emperor. Probably the Champion Spotlight I've been wanting to do the most because I love this character. Ever since I saw him in the game, I thought he was awesome. His armor is awesome, his design is awesome, and he is a monster. Um, the Arakan Undead are my favorite faction, so I might be a bit more critical on this Champion Spotlight than I am. On my normal ones because i just love i love the faction so much i want to see great things for this faction um so saying that straight off the bat i do know that this this champion's weakness is the characters that he is based around the arrogant undead they are not a great faction in the game at the moment which kind of does weaken this character you'll understand a bit later on but what can you do anyway blood emperor let's go over his stats um again I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to give them to you. There is the AOM uh, database down below in the description. Click on that. Compare them to the other heroes in the game if you want. And yeah, we'll just go on. So stats. Then we'll go over his moves. And then we'll do a little bit of a battle and uh, show him off. And as you can hear in the background, I don't know if you can hear it. There's some Halloween music. So that's a little bit of a teaser of what's to come. So I think it sounds amazing. Anyway, so his stats. His hit points come in at 2.2 million. His speed is 210. Not bad for a big boy. His armor is 35k. His magic damage resistance is 27k. Basic damage is 225k. Critical hit chance is 37, which is pretty high. Uh, and critical damage, 370k. So he's a bit of a damage dealer. Big old swings his axe and knocks some boys down. So there you go. And if we go into his stats, I'm going to go through this list real slowly. That way you guys can pause it wherever you want and, uh, and study the stats a bit more. So here you go for you at home, ladies and gents. Absorb those in. Take them in. If there's anything that you see that might interest you, there you go. That is all for you. All for you. Yeah, alright. And we are going to there. Alright, so we'll go over his abilities now, see what he can do, and then, yeah, we'll use him in some battles. Or well, a battle, not battles. I'm not going to give you that much. So here we are. His basic attack, Executioner of Arakan. <coughs> oh, Arakan, sorry. A crushing blow by the Executioner of Arakan that is impossible to dodge. Deals 20% more damage to targets that have no buffs. And has a 30% chance to remove all buffs from the target. So, not bad. It's the no dodging thing that I love, okay? Because we all know some golden characters in the game at the moment that have a big, big old advantage with their dodging. So, I like that. I like that. And triggers the boss class mark. His first special is Mark of the Arakan. A powerful blow that is impossible to dodge that gives debuffs which cannot be blocked by fortitude. Has a 20% chance for each Arakan undead ally to stop the target from hiding from attacks including being behind a tank and the damage that the and the damage they take from the next several hits is increased by 20 percent the number of hits this would work is equal to the number of Arakan undead allies has a 20 percent chance per Arakan undead ally to reduce the target's initiative to zero the target are oh, the next time they are hit so not bad not bad essentially if you have a tank on the team big old blood emperor is going to make them void they're not important tanks this guy does not give a shit about them so a three turn cooldown as well pretty good and triggers a boss class mark um yeah so again enemy can't dodge and he's going with the theme with the boss boss characters being introduced at the game at the moment the more arrow can undead on your team the more effective the ability is so it makes sense he is the leader of the the undead okay his next special is will of the emperor all Arakan undead in the party immediately attack the target with their basic attack. The damage for each attack increases by 15% per Arakan undead ally, and every attack deals 10% more damage to a target without buffs. Has a 20% chance that any hit on the target will remove all its buffs. So this boy is all about removing the buffs and yeah, dealing a lot of damage. I love this. Essentially, he's not doing the damage. It's the Arakan on the, on the team. And that's what I mentioned before. It's a bit of a shame. This is his weakness, is the Arakan Undead aren't as efficient as other characters in the game, and that is his downfall. You need to use the Arakan Undead, but the Arakan Undead compared to other characters... I'm taking a drink. Anyway, that comes on a four-turn cooldown. Not too shabby. Now, his bread and butter, what makes this bad boy just the menace, is his next special ability. 
God of the Undead. A big, big ability. Lots in it. So let's go over it. Absorbs allies to take the form of the God of the Undead for two turns. The God of the Undead, or the God of the Dead, Dead? Oh, Undead, whatever. Uses only a basic attack that deals 5% more damage per absorbed Arakan Undead ally and increases his HP by 100% of their HP. He becomes immune to debuffs and decreases... A decrease of initiative and casts a dot debuff on all enemies that takes 10% of the target's HP. I feel like that should do a bit more. I feel like he should absorb that health as well. Uh, anyway, after the ability finishes, the absorbed allies return to the battlefield. The God of the Dead's HP is shared equally among all Arak and Undead allies, and they recover 20% of their HP and will not die if the next attack they take is a killing blow. Instead... They will regain 10% of their HP. Ability cooldown 5. And triggers the boss class mark. So yeah, he just becomes a big, big menace on the field. He, he transforms. The animation is amazing. I love him. I love him. I just wish the Arakan Undead were a bit stronger. And he would be... Oh, such a fun character. He is a fun character to use. But yeah. And lastly, we have Blood Empress, Passive Lord of the Arakan. Arakan Undead receive immunity to dot effects. Their HP increases by 35%, speed by 20%, fortitude by 20%, and other factions receive half of the 20% fortitude bonus. If an Arakan Undead ally does, not, does an attack but deals no damage if dodged or absorbed by a shield, then another random Arakan Undead ally will deal damage to that target or another available target. So you just follow up with a basic attack. So, yeah, really effective against the um, the Archons at the moment because of Sacrif. When a one of your allies or you, whoever you're using, critically hits an Ar uh, Archon Arakan, I'm going to get so confused. They will receive the chance to dodge the next attack. So. With this guy in the field, he can hit them without them dodging. And if your allies do dodge, or if the Archons do dodge, then a random Arakan ally with a tongue twister will follow up with a basic attack. So pretty cool. Um, I like it. Of course, it's like carrying some of the, the traits of regular um, passives from leaders at the moment where they give the extra health and speed and whatnot makes sense but this only apart from the fortitude this only works for the arrogant undead essentially because it'd be cool if the hp buff was for other characters as well because then you could run Hilia, wukong this guy and see how high of health pools you could get on some champions anyway let's use this guy in battle uh see what he can do and yeah we'll figure out who we want to verse so we will be versing some of the animals of the game, okay? We, uh, yeah, alright. So let us start by using anti-heal on Lucky. We do not want Lucky to heal. She, uh, Arakan Shadow gets the two anti-heals off, which is awesome. And we are going to start by using Mark of the Arakon. So this, uh, this puts the a new debuff on the enemies. As you can see, it's hard to... Can we move in a bit closer? There we go. Uh, you see the little little person with an arrow in them that means that they can no longer hide even if there is a tank on the field you can still target that character but we are still going to aim lucky um are we going to taunt we are going to taunt with our tank and then we're going to apply anti-heal to everyone and then we are going to use a big old seven axe strike against lucky there we go okay we are going to use a decrease and then we're going to auto attack and then it will be blood empress and we're going to slow the speed down for you and we are going to use Will of the Emperor. So this is essentially going to kill Lucky. I'm wondering if I want to use it on Lucky or use the damage a bit more effectively against someone else. Now we do have anti-heals up. So let's use it against uh, Lucky's boyfriend. So we're going to go slow motion just so everyone can see it. So he hits the target with the mark and then every Arakan dead on the team smashes them with an auto attack. So a fair bit of damage. I, re I wish the Arak and Undead had um, more abilities with their passives that could they could apply. Anyway, all right, so we're going to increase the initiative of the Undead. We are going to follow up with a double axe strike and not kill Lucky. Interesting. Okay, we will kill Lucky here now, though. And then we will heal up. Then we will do an AoE. And then we'll use Arak and... Uh, not Arak and Blood Emperor's big old ability and turn him into a monster. And here we go. He... Oh, look how big he is. He is... Um, I love it. 
I love it. He looks so cool. Okay, now we are going to auto attack. Uh, Softy should kill a 330k. Uh, now that was a critical strike. What I have found in this game is if you kill someone and it's a critical strike, the critical strike won't come up with the big red numbers if it's the killing blow. Like it is there, you saw the big red numbers. Anyway, we are going to move on to Sabretooth next. Uh, 260. So you see the regular hits are 260k, the crit was 330. It just didn't show up as the big numbers because um, we we killed the target. So just auto attacking here. Nothing fancy. I do not have a healer on the team, so we might actually lose Arik and um, uh, Axe Thrower there, which is okay. Uh, what are we going to do here? Uh, let's use the mark on Wukong. Just get as much damage out as we can. We will lose... Oh, he's hanging in there, isn't he? There he goes. He dies. But that's okay. We take out uh, Sabretooth, and then we will be able to take out Wukong. I'm just going to use my abilities because I can. We'll use the anti-heal. Hits a double strike again, and we're just going to auto attack. Actually, let's turn him into a big boy and finish off with some big axe hits. Can we crit him for the kill? Ah, oh, we couldn't. That's unfortunate. And then we finish the battle off. So... Yeah, that's him in battle. I love him. I love how he can absorb everyone and actually transform in battle. I think they could do a lot with that. New characters that have like an ascendant, ascending form like Balthazar. How he gets his five tokens and he can do extra things. It'd be cool to see a character that can gain tokens or something, but then transform. Seeing that stuff... <laughs> my throat, sorry guys. Seeing that stuff in battle is just awesome. I love the Blood Emperor. I do think he is an awesome character. His downfall is the Arakan Undead, though. There are no amazing characters in the Arakan Undead, unfortunately. Shadow is like a weaker version of Cage. You've got that going for him. The heals aren't great. You have um, Blood Priest. He does need another healer, though. Like, he just... He does damage, he takes damage. It's a, it's a whole thing. And Blood Emperor does do a bit of healing as well. Is it enough to survive against strong teams in the game at the moment though we have to wait and find out but who knows maybe someone or even myself will stumble across an awesome team to put him in anyway ladies and gents thank you so much for watching if you do have any questions feel free to leave a comment below i'll answer to the best of my ability and wherever you are in the world until next time please take care of yourself